Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. ASME has a set of specifications called PCC, which are referred to as post-construction specs. And they are different than your construction specs. Uh, the construction specs are, are considered to be, for example, B31.3, B31.4. This is for post-construction. And there are three in the series. The first one's called PCC1, pressure boundary bolted flange joint assemblies. Second, PCC2, uh, repair pressure equipment and piping. The third is called PCC3, inspection planning using risk-based methods. The series that we're going to be discussing is called PCC2, which is referred to as repair of equipment and piping. A little bit further into PCC2. There are a number of sections in it. The first of all is the scope, organization, and repair. This talks a little bit more definition about the scope, which we'll go through in, a, in brief shortly. And then we'll talk about weld repairs. There's actually 16 articles, and they call them articles, about the different kinds of repairs. The, there's in part three are mechanical repairs, which there are 13 articles. And then there's a section four called non-metallic and bonded repairs, which there are three. And um, this section is, is kind of in development. They're relatively new. The other one is called pressure and tightness of piping equipment. And there are three articles. Okay, I'm going to try to give you a high-level summary of what of the scope of PCC2. It, it covers the repair of equipment. So that includes piping, pipelines, associated ancillary equipment after it has been placed into service. So it's, it's not construction, it's post-construction. So it covers repair methods and they include relevant design, fabrication, exam, test and examination practices. So they, they assist the maintenance engineer to uh, and the steps for, for repairs. Temporary or permanent. These repairs can be temporary or permanent. And when the repair is necessary, it is based on an inspection and flaw assessment. Now we've talked about what's included in the scope, but what's not included in the scope and how does it fit into the general scheme of things? Well, for one thing that this specification does not cover inspection and flaw evaluation methods. They are not covered under this document. If you need those, then uh, a place to start would be API 510 for vessels, API 570 for piping, API 1169 for pipelines, and API 653 for tanks. There are more, but uh, these are, are the big ones. For flaw evaluation, uh, API 571, API 579, the most uh, the most common type of design, and it's also called ASME FF Fitness for Service one. Only technical procedures and information are provided uh, in the spec. So, the, the, say the laws of of the state or province that you're in. Uh, those have to be are not mentioned, and and the and um, the user has to be aware of those things. Continue on to part two, weld repairs, with a summary of the sixteen articles. 
The first part is called Article 201, and it has to do with butt welded insert plates in pressure components. So this is the case where you do a flaw analysis and you have a thin section. This is one of the strategies you can follow if you can shut the line down is to go and cut that section out. So they they are trying to make it very symmetrical and with this the simplest welding methods and they're uh, with this procedure, you have to use uh, full penetration butt welds so that it re-meets code. And of course, you have to do like an alteration report. So here, in this case, we have insert plates on the, on the pressure boundary. We have full penetration butt welds to meet code. And this is done to, to make it as easy as welding as possible. And this is assuming like a standard wall thickness that you don't have a really thick wall in other cases there might be other uh, requirements uh, cylindrical and spherical and flat and conical shells so for pretty much any shape you can use this technology or this method and uh, again it's for local cracks and wall thinning where where you, they've elected to to replace the certain sections to save the rest of the components that are in place Now, 202 has to do with external weld buildup to repair internal thinning. Now, this is a case where you have internal thinning and another strategy is to do weld buildup. Uh, and this is uh, the methods and the, the ways of doing that kind of in-service requirements. So you can do this while it's operating. And uh, basically, you're repairing the pressure components degraded by wall thinning. And of course, you're doing an, an alteration here. And so, you know, this can be caused by flow acceleration, FAC, or erosion corrosion, as determined by inspection. In the other sections we talked about, either this has to do with the, 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 one of the remedy strategies to fix this. You can do well build up on the exterior. And, um, and basically, this is for something where you have no cracks to fix. So you can't really do this if there's cracks. Article 203 deals with seal welded threaded connections and, and seal weld repairs. Now, the philosophy is fairly simple here. You want threads. You still have your threads for mechanical strength and your welds are for leak tightness. You're not replacing the threads. You're, it's just for, for your mechanical strength. Your, your welds aren't for mechanical strength. That's a key thing to remember. And um, applications, high temperatures or, or high pressures, Fluids that are non are flammable, toxic, or reactive, or fluids that require very, very low uh, leakage rates and, and usually toxic will do that for you. And uh, if they can't buy that equipment and you have to go back later and the components are threaded, then this is what you'd have to do to seal that unit up. Article 204 has to do with leak box repair, which is one of the most common uh, procedures that a maintenance engineer will perform. And basically your, the purpose is to uh, repair leaking components and or se secondly, uh, reinforce damaged structural components, ones that will fail or a combination of both. Uh, commonly, the most common ones that I've worked with is flanges, valves, fittings, branches, and uh, vents and drains are uh, common. They can get cracks and they can leak and you can't shut the unit down to replace them or it's not economical to do so. And so basically use custom parts that are, uh, you know, split pipes, pipe caps or plates and uh, you put it together and it's uh, you know it's that's how it works and there's more details in article 204 205 has to do with weld ring gaskets and uh, 
uh, it's something that that I've done with very high pressure units and when we've done very high pressure he, uh, heat exchangers and uh, basically it involves a few steps here the first step is you weld each individual ring to its spot right there and right there and right there and then you after you position it then you weld the rings together now there's a couple different types actually there's a book of them different types of styles there's a ring one and there's one this one which is one of the more common because it's so simple but there's reasons to do either one and it's usually temperature related and they use this when conventional gaskets aren't desirable uh, for one reason or another and and usually it's because of pressure and you never have to disassemble this joint the, the, the disassembly of this joint is very infrequent infrequent because you got to go in there and you got to uh, uh, cut this this off and and then sometimes you have to replace that gasket lots of information in article 205 206 has to do with full encirclement reinforcement sleeves for piping which is also very common and sometime and again it, you're using it for, for either leakage or structural and it's you know fairly simple but there are procedures for that for the engineer so you weld sleeves for piping or pipelines and the sleeves can be designed for uh, non-pressure containing applications as well is in a, a new slide it's about article 207 fillet welded patches with reinforcing plugs i've seen this mostly for for like uh, liner systems where you want to put up a lot of material and maybe an overlay is too time consuming or expensive it's a confined space but it's a lot of work to install it because you got to fit that that repair plate back into the original uh, components exterior or interior inside or outside and it must fit that contour and if the box is warped or whatever it could be quite uh whether the vessels warped it can be quite tricky but you know nowadays you can do scanning and um, you can do some grinding to fit and this is one strategy notice that there's slotted holes as well and that that sure helps to uh, to fit that in and uh, again it's an alteration so um, you know if it's a pressure vessel it covers uh, note that this is you should, it, you, when you do it you should cover the damaged area and consider any future damage from repairs over its design life so you, you know if you're going to go in there go in once and, and do it and make sure you covered it so uh, again it utilizes plug plug welding to secure the plate in the place and there's very detailed um, many many steps in this procedure but it's very, it's an interesting read and again it's for wall thinning you can use it for all kinds of different shapes as long as you can make it work and make it fit you're good through part two of PCC2. This is probably a good chance to stop and we'll continue this in the next presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at Athabasca Engineering Solutions. If you need any help on, on some of these related products, we have a lot of experience. We'd be pleased to help or if you need training, also contact me. Take care. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.